So after living in Vietnam for over seven months and now being back in the United States, there are quite a few different things that I wish I knew before moving there. Things that I do believe may be valuable to you if you're planning on moving to Vietnam or Asia in general. Hello and welcome to the Asian and Caucasian show. If you're new here, then well, nice to meet you. And if you've seen these videos before, well then welcome back. So one of the things that I would personally change is I would try to bring a lot more money with me or try to find a way of supplementing my income while I am overseas. Now, Vietnam is a very inexpensive country and we brought somewhere around $7,000 for me, my wife and my son. And I thought that that would last us uh, really well considering that we do have family over there and we were able to stay for free. But one of the things that maybe I didn't think through enough was we still had bills back at home. We had things that we've bought that we needed to pay off. We had a car note and to make matters worse on top of the bills that we had back home, we also went with the intent to be able to travel quite a bit throughout the country. And we were able to travel to a lot of different places and make videos, of course. But I wish we could have done more with the time that we had allowed. But well, the finances have kind of held us back. And now we have to come back to the United States to try to make up enough money to not only pay off what we have here at home, but also to go for hopefully our next trip, which will probably be coming up early next year. So my advice to you would be, if you're planning on moving to Vietnam or somewhere else within Asia, and you think that you've budgeted enough, you probably haven't. So try to add at least some extra money to it. And of course you can be thrifty while you're there, but if you're wanting to have a kind of grand experience and see a lot of the country, well, maybe you will want to take a little bit more. The next thing that I wish I knew is that being an American there can be a bit lonely. I did of course have my family there, but the language barrier was very steep. I've tried to learn quite a bit of Vietnamese over the last 10 years being married to my wife, but unfortunately, maybe I just haven't put the proper time in, but it's definitely been challenging for me to learn. You know haircut? <laughs> okay. Uh, cut your haircut, I don't know. Yeah. Say haircut. Cắt tóp. What'd you say again? Cắt tóp. What'd you say again? Cắt tóp. No, they say cắt tóp. Cắt tóp. So what did I say? You say... You said it like cacao. What's they that mean? Cacao mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think when I go over the next time, I want to be quite a bit more fluid with the language just so I can have a more rich experience, be able to communicate with more people. And if you're unable or maybe you just do not have the time to learn more of the language before going over, I think maybe seek out community of people who are maybe digital nomads or other people who are coming through there that speak English because being in a different foreign country, even if people are welcoming like the Vietnamese people are, there's still a lot of people who do not know English and that is something that I didn't necessarily even know that I missed. Uh, until I got back in America and I was just like, man, I've really been craving conversation. Moving on, another thing that I wish I would have done is well make more videos while being there and document my time there more wisely. Uh, I don't know if I just thought I would have more time or I thought that I would have more footage than I did. But instead of just going to the places that are incredible that I was lucky enough to go to and film there, I would have documented just my time even back in our hometown and just shared more of my experiences. And maybe that's more personal to me for somebody who's trying to do this YouTube game, but I also think it can apply to you as well. You could maybe journal your experiences more because it's always nice to be able to look back and kind of spark a memory of a different time in your life. So if you are going over there, I would recommend whether or not you're a YouTuber or just somebody in general, take as many photos as you can, maybe start a journal, 
uh, just document your time there because when you are back in whatever your country is, you will want to look back on that experience for the rest of your life, possibly. So I know this video was a little off the cuff, but I just wanted to quickly share a few of those insights with you. If you enjoy travel and learning about other countries, especially Vietnam, and would like to go on this YouTube journey with my family and myself, I would very much appreciate a subscribe. Until next time, peace.